Hi guys, this is the Lowen Guru and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Selenium. This is a basic tutorial, very basic one. Right now I have just installed uh, Firefox and I'll search for Selenium. First I'll show you how the Selenium IDE works. You see this is the website for Selenium, hq.org. I'm looking for the IDE. This is the basic uh, version 5D. Basically Selenium is like a set of tools that you can use to test and automate tests uh, for web applications and anything that runs on a browser basically. So I'm installing this Selenium IDE which is basically like a Firefox add-on. Okay so it's installed. Now if I need to use it I'll just press Alt and here in the tools menu I have the Selenium IDE which is as you can see is like an extra window that opens uh, on top of Firefox so I'll just keep Firefox on one side and the Selenium IDE window on the other side now I'm ready to make some tests here the, I'll try testing my website let's go to lowenguru.com now uh, one thing you need to know about Selenium IDE is that it is uh, like a record and play kind of thing uh, it will record all the actions you perform against your browser and then you will be able to play them back and of course include some kind of verification to make sure that the uh, actual behavior uh, is the one that you're expecting now let's see well right here in Selenium IDE you can see that uh, this uh, red ball here is like a pressed button uh, it means that it's already playing if I put my mouse there it says now recording it means it's already playing if I want it to stop I mean it's recording if I want to stop recording I just click it again and it is no longer recording if I click it again now it's recording again and you get the idea so I'll perform some basic actions against this uh, browser and you will see how every action I perform here translates into a command that uh, pretty much aims at a target and well the value thing is for some kind of commands so let's give it a shot. I'll try to go into the. I mean, just click here on the, the how to make a network cable post. And as I click it, you can see that it automatically filled the base URL. So it means that our test will be performed against this URL. Now, the first command is open and it goes to the root of that URL. You see that forward slash there. Then it makes a click and wait command. And the target, well, it automatically selects the target and well if I click on the command I can see here well I'll just open this a little bit you can see that's the selected target it basically points to a style sheet a anchor here it identified the title and well it automatically selected there are uh, different ways to choose the target one way is using IDs in the H HTML another one is to allow this to automatically select it uh, also you could use XPath if you know if you know how to use it you see these are the different possibilities um, pretty much any of these will work if you know how to use XPath for example you could write your own XPath expression and this target could be uh, a little bit more dynamic I'll leave it as it is because it's working and there's no problem you can see that it took me here to this page that would be a good moment to uh, let the test know that I want to verify that the action I performed here is having the expected behavior so let's say that the expected behavior for clicking on this link is, is reaching a post that says quick instructions how to prepare a UTP cable so what I can do is just select this text here right click and over here I already have like in the context menu it says verify the text present and the text is quick instructions how to prepare a UTP cable right so if I click here, oops, there, there we go. See the verification must must be after the command itself. So what this step uh, will do is it will verify that the text is present. If the text is not present, the the test will fail and it will let me know that text is not there. Let's say I want to continue recording and including some other commands. Let's say I want to click on home and go back you see 
so it takes me back to the home screen. Now that I am in the home screen, it would be a good idea to identify somehow the fact that I'm in the home screen and verify it. Let's say uh, I want to verify that this text here is present. So I'll just select it, right click, and there we go. Verify text present, and now I have another assertion here. Now, I could also exp wait for certain elements to be present on the screen, such as images, for example. So this image of me holding a netbook is a nice image. I right click on it, and I have other options here. Uh, one of them is to uh, assert that the element is present. So basically, we check that the element is present, and I'll just make sure in the target here that it's pointing to what I want it to point. I mean, it's the image. So you see, that's the image, that's the JPEG. Uh, uh, so I'll just select that one just to use a different target because I feel like it. So let's say I stop testing right now and that's my basic test so I'll just play it back using the play current test case thing here so as I click it you will see that it automatically starts executing and you can see how it paints green uh, every step that passes successfully and uh, well the test already passed successfully you see the green bar here it says runs one, fails zero, means everything's okay. Now, suppose the text I wanted to find here was not uh, the quick instructions on how to prepare a UTP cable, but it was, I don't know, slow instructions on how to prepare a UTP cable. So that one, if I place this back, it will tell me that the text is not there, because it's not, and my test will fail when it gets to that step, you see? So, that's the... You see red, it means it failed there. Now, there's a small difference between verified text present and another command that is very similar, which is called assert text present. The difference between a verification and an assertion is basically that when, it, when it's verified, if it fails, it will attempt to continue running the test, if it can. In, but when it's an assertion, if it's assert, and I play it back, you will see that the whole test will stop right there. It will not attempt to continue. Small but important difference. Okay, now if, if I wanted to save this test as it is, I could, you see it's uh, called untitled right now. Uh, well, basically what I could do is just save the test case into uh, a file and the, f the file will basically will be like a internally it will look like an HTML file and Selenium IDE can then go and open the file. But this is a basic tutorial so let's continue with something else. One more important command that you should keep in mind is the type command when you want to have text input let's say I'll start recording here uh, let's say I want to search here for the word tablet so I'll type tablet tablet and click here and you see it automatically goes here to the command which is type the target auto automatically identified and the value is tablet and it would be a great idea to somehow add some verification here that the word tablet let's say this is what I'm trying to verify oh you see here I can verify and oops make sure the verification is always after the actions you performed and let's give it a shot I'll now play it to see if it works so you see it types the word tablet and then here it is so that's a pass that's the most basic things you should know about Selenium IDE in future tutorials I'll show you more complex tests that you can perform and also I'll show you how to export this into a programming language so that if you have any programming skills you could uh, write uh, very complex uh, scenarios and automate uh, very complex 
uh, situations. Leave your comments and questions, although I'm sorry I may not be able to answer all of them. If you liked this video, subscribe because there will be more. I'm Drawing Guru, have a nice day.